fine guys now is the right time to talk about interview i believe because nowadays if you are working in uh, any platform kubernetes is common for all these people you agree with me or not you are working in uh, aws you are working in azure or you are working in gcp or you are a devops guy you are working in linux based environment you are working in on prem based environment you are working as a developer whatever it is kubernetes is common for everyone that is the reason today if you go and attend any interview the job description mention minimum one point would say uh, kubernetes knowledge is added benefit in every job the description of interview you can see so that is the main reason right i have bought this topic today to discuss about uh, the interview preparation for kubernetes okay that's very important all right so let me open my notepad i'll tell about the interview preparation points hari i am having one question hello yeah go ahead uh, are you covering ci ct pipeline too sorry sorry i didn't get you ci pipeline continuous integration continuous deployment okay ring to we'll discuss we'll discuss we'll discuss okay yeah. just to follow me because i have not started discussing anything on ci just wait by end of this you will came to know okay thanks thank you fine guys first thing uh, before you uh, preparing before you started attending to any uh, kubernetes interview right you should have some technology knowledge that's very important okay and those technologies are you know the pre requirement is all about aws basics at least if you are expert in aws that's really really good at least if you know the basic that will be added benefit second thing docker okay that will be a really really important when you are attending for kubernetes interview Uh, because before you go for kubernetes interview you will be expecting some questions from docker as well because docker is the fundamental for my kubernetes and third one right you should have a idea about any scm source code management repository i would refer i would recommend to go with github if you have a github source code repo knowledge right that will be added benefit and fourth one right you should know about jenkins just before jenkins uh, rinko asked right what ci cd you gonna cover yeah of course jenkins is very important that when you go for attending any sort of interviews and uh, another one is docker hub or aws ecr uh, repo uh, image repo okay if you have that knowledge on docker hub or uh, aws ecr that will be added benefit to you guys and finally you should have the kubernetes knowledge okay that will be added benefit the six technology is very important is the pre requirement i can say in terms of attending interview if you are lagging in any one of this go ahead and prepare it then you go for the interview this is the point number 1 each and everybody have to consider before attending the interview once you have a sophisticated knowledge on these six technology only then you are base level eligible to attend any sort of interview okay fine uh, these are the technology background we need before attending the interview now i'll talk about the interview exactly okay let me uh, let me make it simple so okay in interview when you are start discussing right very first thing you have to tell about your self intro you have to tell about your self intro whenever you guys are started discussing about self introduction right the very first thing you will be telling your basic information correct about your basic information hey my name is rinko hey my name is santosh i'm from this location uh, this is my hobbies blah 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 this is my education this is my you know uh, plus points or whatever you will share that information it's not really up to you guys basic information whichever you would like to share share it even you need not to share anything don't share anything it, it will not going to impact anything in your interview just it's all up to you the point which you need to con consider right the second point is very important the second point you have to tell about your current infrastructure especially you have to tell talk about your kubernetes cluster architecture okay you have to talk about your kubernetes architecture So, what does mean by Kubernetes architecture? You have to explain 
how many number of nodes available in your Kubernetes architecture? Uh, which how many number of master nodes are there? How many number of worker nodes are there? Who's taking care of the cluster? Whether your team is taking care of the cluster or either any dedicated team available for taking care of the cluster? Is it on-prem based Kubernetes cluster or uh, cloud based Kubernetes cluster? If it is cloud based Kubernetes cluster, which cloud it is from? It is AWS based cluster or GCP based cluster or uh, the Azure based cluster. All right. So who's managing your master node? Sometimes what happened, right? When you are managing your cluster on AWS, AWS is taking care of managing your master node. Your responsibility is to manage only the worker node. And coming back to uh, monitoring system, how are you monitoring your uh, uh, Kubernetes cluster? Is there any dedicated L1 team available? All this information, right? You have to talk about it. During the self-introduction itself, you have to tell about your uh, infrastructure. That will be giving you more added benefit. About your cluster, environment, and the monitoring system, and how are you managing the high availability, number of nodes, and uh, how you are managing the master node. About your cluster, environment means the platform. Which platform you are mentioned, how you are monitoring it, is there any dedicated L1 team available? How are you managing the uh, high availability? Uh, how many number of nodes available? Uh, who's managing the master node? These information, really important, guys. When you are sharing these information, right, your interviewer will come into the mindset, okay, this guy, right, uh, is really, uh, you know, informative. That about the architecture of the cluster, first of all. So next point, while telling the self-introduction, you have to tell your roles and responsibilities. See, I'll tell you one thing honestly, okay, because I am an interviewer. Uh, whenever there is an opening in my project, I used to take Kubernetes is the technology. Last to be honest, I'm telling two to three years, it's become very famous. Everybody using it. Some people write that they will have a 10 years experience, five years experience. That time and all Kubernetes, the technology itself not came. But the people write, they will tell, I have a six years experience in Kubernetes. Well, during the interview, right, they will tell like that. Actually, that is not correct. Practically, that is not possible. So some people, right, they have not even worked on Kubernetes. They have learned Kubernetes somewhere like me, when I'm like a guy like me, right? Whenever I'm taking interview, sorry, whenever I'm taking a session, you guys will be attending or uh, capturing all the knowledge. Still came for the interview. That time, right? Uh, they will be very much afraid. Hey, oh my God, I'm not working on Kubernetes. How can I tell that? How can I tell about my architecture? How can I tell my roles and responsibility? So that confusion will be there with the people. So make it simple. People today, okay, people today who are attending interview for Kubernetes, right? Ninety percent of people who's not working in Kubernetes, based upon the you know the knowledge whatever they have gathered from the different, different sources, only based upon that knowledge only they are attending the interview. Don't get it, you know, confused. Even though you are not working in Kubernetes, uh, learn proper thing and you can attend the interview very confidently. You'll be able to easily clear. Okay, I know it eh? because I am taking the interview. I know the people mindset. So even though you are not working in uh, Kubernetes, uh, build up your things and uh, convey that information during the interview. Uh, during the interview. So your roles and responsibility would be really, really important. You can ask me, Hari, what will be my roles and responsibility? How will I understand it? Because I am totally new to Kubernetes. Don't worry, I have a dedicated session for this. I will tell about it. Okay, you will be learning it about. So after that, right, we will be asking your questions. And telling about self-introduction, why I wanted to tell you the detailed information during the self-introduction itself. Because when you are conveying the self-introduction, that's complete your timing. Nobody going to interrupt you. This is a great opportunity for you to cover all the information, whichever you are comfortable. Whatever the information you are very much comfortable, you can expect the questions from those area. If you are not telling this in proper way, see, maybe in Kubernetes, there are many uh, uh, topics are there. See, I'll, I'll show you one second. When you take a Kubernetes, right? There is something called, you know, a controller manager will be there, mini group will be there, a config map, a secret will be there, volumes will be there, deployment, the stateful set, many concepts are there. Just imagine you have a very good knowledge with the volumes. Okay, just imagine you have a very good knowledge with the config map and secret. Just imagine you doesn't know any knowledge on services ingress. Just imagine like that. Okay, just imagine like that you doesn't have any knowledge about uh, services and ingress. But you have pretty much, you know, confident knowledge. You, have, you, you do, you learned only config map secret and volumes. You have a very good knowledge. So in that case, what you supposed to do during your uh, self introduction when you are explaining about your roles and responsibility, you have to tell more of your responsibility from the area uh, area where you are very much strong. Something volumes, config, secret, and Kubernetes, those topics, right? If you are really confident, you are having really good knowledge, 
you have to convey that service uh, more only then you can expect the questions during the second part when when interview like me whenever we are asking questions to you we will be asking more questions from the volumes in the country manager or the area user if you are not telling your roles and responsibility properly we will be asking randomly we will never know since you didn't uh, say anything about it we will ask from all the topics that will be really hard for us to clear the interview so make sure whichever the area you are very much comfortable try to include that in your roles and responsibility okay yeah of course i'll tell you about roles and responsibility also please right so coming to this part questions nowadays right we are asking scenario basis questions only from live project from live project we are asking question we are asking about the client requirement and we are asking about the use case based question we are asking these kind of questions during the interview so you have to prepare in this way what is meant by live project based questions what is meant by client requirement based what is meant by use case based questions so whenever uh, you are working in any kubernetes project right so i i will tell you many people know they are repeatedly we will come back to this i'll go back to the presentation i'll tell you i'll explain what is meant by live project based question client requirement use case based questions everything so coming to this many people right who are attending the interview right they did a very common mistake i notice always they are completely right depends on youtube and udemy why why i made very big into mark i'll tell you just to understand the reason when you learn from youtube and udemy right people are more and more into concepts oriented people are more and more into theory oriented if you take kubernetes right there are lots of theory contents are there which is not really really matters but many of the youtube channel many of the udemy people right they are including more theoretical content only for reason they have to watch our something so what i am trying to say whenever you guys are preparing for an interview right we are clearly knows people going to ask these kind of questions only to you people live project based question client requirement use case based question so whenever you are trying to learn kubernetes kind of technology you have to learn with your client requirement you have to learn with the client use case perspective so i'll tell you an example okay i'll tell you an example try to understand if you understand that point you will be able to easily manage these three part what does it mean first thing when you are decided to learn kubernetes right you have to learn about uh, how the kubernetes multiple environments will be how it will work when we are working on on premises how the kubernetes cluster working when it is in cloud how many nodes are generally there in a live project okay who will be managing the master node what is how people are monitoring what is the monitoring tool they are using okay what will be the client requirement when i work on a live kubernetes project what uh, task my client will give me to work on what kind of different different tickets i will receive what are the application people used to deploy in the kubernetes how are they managing the high availability how i am exposing any application to outside internet how will i use the load balancer to expose my application to outside how can i map my application through a proper domain name how will i manage the dns how will i manage the security of my kubernetes cluster how will i manage the port and uh, the necessary protocol opening things in the uh, kubernetes so you have to learn these kind of live project perspective when you are learning that kind of project perspective you will be easily able to answer these question even though they are asking live project based client requirement based use case based right you will be able to easily manage so i have one more tips for you all i will tell you about your roles and responsibility right so i have one more document with me the this is the document this document almost it took for me to 3 month for me to create you can't believe right this is not like a general document what you have this is something special and every week i used to do update this document you can't you can't believe right so i'll tell you this document is completely made up of the client requirement basis when you work on a live project right uh, whatever the use cases you will receive from your customer whatever the ticket you will receive from your customer based upon all those you know Uh, areas and live project skill we have created this document see uh, we have in many section this is a section 1 for docker container section 2 for docker uh, web app section 3 for docker file for web application deployment see just to try to understand one of the client requirement see create a image from docker file clone the application source code from the following uh, github repository this is my github repository all my website source codes are available here expose the http port use internet or apache service to deploy the application uh, set up the internet apache as a default working directory so when you work on a live project right your client will be giving the 
uh, uh, developer will be giving a uh, web page development source code like this only. Based upon this input, right, you have to work on their requirement. Based upon their uh, use cases, right, you'll have to work on their requirement. I'm coming to the Docker automation. See, many many steps are there. See, there are some manual process in our project, which is installing Docker and start the service, create a uh, Docker file from GitHub repo, and create the image from Docker file, deploy the application into the container. Client requirement has to have the automate this task through pipeline. Rinku just before asked, right? I told him I want to discuss about it. Yeah, this is what the CACD pipeline is up now. The activity, whatever we are doing, we'll have to use Jenkins and we need to automate the task. This kind of use cases only you will get it on live project. Right? This kind of use cases only you will be getting it on the live project. See another one. My client is Target. They have a many EKS Kubernetes cluster running in their environment. They wanted to expose their application via AWS load balancer. According to their need, we need to set up the uh, two part backend of the load balancer. We need to expose the application. So my client is asking me to expose my application using AWS load balancer. Understand? My client is asking me to expose my application using AWS load balancer. Okay, that is what my client is needs. So when you work on a live project, right? Each and every uh, use cases you are seeing here, these are some of the examples. But when an actual project, right? These are one of the use case from our customer. These are the one of the tickets from my customer. All right. So in our training, right? My ultimate aim is I told you 30 hours of session for Docker and Kubernetes. We are going to uh, discuss about each and every client requirement on daily basis. We'll take one use case, uh, one day basis. 30 years a day, right? You will be familiarized with 30 different live project scenarios. Okay, that is my ultimate plan. We are starting everything from the scratch, and we are day by day, day by day. We are you know increasing the stuff and uh, you will be learning that concept. Okay, that is my ultimate plan. You will also interact with some use cases uh, diagram also the flow automation flow. See, I'll, I'll there in my thing itself. See, I'll show you here. Basically, there is a developer will be there who is to develop the source code. He'll be pushing it to the GitHub repository. This is my GitHub repository. Source code repo. From the GitHub repo, right? What people will do? They will take a Jenkins. Okay, here Jenkins as a CI/CD tool. So Jenkins will be Mm, uh, it will take the source code from the GitHub repo and it will, uh, with the help of Docker, right? It will push the image to my Docker hub. So, based upon things, right, I'll be deploying my application into my Kubernetes. The entire process, right, will be considered as a CI CD. So, we'll be doing that stuff during our training. This is what uh, the major common thing on every project is whenever you go for any uh, things. So, major common things on uh, mail uh, in every project. So that is what I have mentioned here, right? Your roles and responsibility. When as soon as you have understand these requirement, on during your roles and responsibility, you can tell these are the information. This is the stuff we are doing in a live project. You will get much more confident. Understand each and every use cases whenever you used to do practice, you can simply tell them, okay, these many use cases you have practiced, you have practically worked on, right? You can simply tell them during your roles and responsibility time, you can easily convey them. Okay, this is what I'm doing in my project. Even whenever they ask live questions, client based requirement, you take the requirement, also, you'll be able to easily answer it. Because here you are not only learning the uh, concepts and theory, you are also learning your use case based questions. Use case based questions, and you are practically working on all the use cases. That is very important, right? 